walking around in the back at a wrestling event and talking to some friends, I heard someone saying my name. When I was able to find the source of the call, I found a person laid out on a gurney and asking if I would be their friend on Facebook because they were a fan of my work. I told them I would, but I wondered who was this barely conscious person on a stretcher being wheeled out to an ambulance. It wouldn't be long before I knew the answer. His name was Christian Cross, and he had just had his first wrestling match. Cross had not been trained properly, if at all, at this point, and shouldn't have been in the ring. A shady promoter named Randy Epperson looked over that to fill spots on his card cheaply. This resulted in a less than optimal welcome to the business. And uh, I would say the beginning was ACW Gold Rush, if I'm correct, right? Yeah, yeah, that was, that was yeah. I'd agree with you on that one. So that's the first time that maybe you got your negative heat here in the south uh just walk me through that uh that night if you would all right um well it was sort of a last minute thing uh when randy got a hold of me it was because uh jason well kind of like kid uh he got me on the show in the beginning so in the back of my mind i, I knew <laughs> i wasn't really ready to to be on the show at that time uh, but I, I took it upon myself to do so. Um, I get there, and at first I was supposed to be in the um, the one that you were in the hardcore scramble gimmick. Yeah. Uh, well, Joe Hogan changed that, so he put me in with uh, Corey Shaddix and Phil Macho, and I forgot who my partner was. Uh, oh. Who? Yeah, that's the one. Um. And like I said, I, I wasn't I wasn't completely ready to, to be in there, especially with people who were that experienced. And I didn't know that uh, Bill knew all the kind of martial arts that he does, but I found out. Anyway, uh, we walked over the match. We talked over the match. And uh, I honestly had no idea what the fuck was going on. At the time, I was, I was tired. I was on energy drinks and other stuff that we're not going to talk about. And... Uh, I decided to go out there, like I said, take it upon myself and try to do this, this match. And I ended up getting the shit beat out of me because I made the mistake of trying to attack Corey after the fact when it was all over with. Uh, I really don't know why. It's just, I have no excuse for it. And uh, yeah, they beat the shit out of me and I 100% deserve that. Cross left on a stretcher that night, but he would be back. He would change his approach and become a deathmatch wrestler. However, the young man had no idea what kind of domino effect he had caused with his incident after his first match. He would have a bout with John Rare at Carnage Cup 9 to kick off his deathmatch career. Carnage Cup 9 rolled around. And, uh, you know, you, you and Kevin talked. And we uh, we decided to do the hostile match first round, which you know to this day is probably one of the biggest upset stories in Carnage Cup history. Yeah, I would say so. Man, uh, I, honestly, that that I knew about it. I want to say well, we're like six months in advance. Um, so from from the time I found out about it, I was nervous. 
but the real the nerves didn't kick in until the day of uh, when I got there because I was like, man, you know, this is something I've been wanting to do, and you know, I was wanting to work with you for a while. I actually think we worked before that, um, if I'm not mistaken, and so I was comfortable with working with you. Um, so I wasn't nervous to the fact that I thought you were gonna hurt me or anything like that. It was just the fact that, you know, this is my first time doing something like this, and Kevin started naming off the gimmicks and, and all that. And, you know, this, like I said, the day that I got there, I was like, man, here it is. This is what we're doing. Uh, but that day, it, it wasn't. And, uh, yeah, we got there, uh, set up at the hotel or whatever, and then I got to the building a little early. Uh, saw everything set up, and then the nerves really started sitting in when I realized, you know, what kind of shit I just got myself into. Uh, my mindset was really just all the same. The whole time, it was just nerves, but, you know, that's, that's, any, that's coming in any death match, you know, and I've realized that since then. But, uh, yeah, man, uh, I was nervous as shit, but you did take care of me the whole time, so I was thankful for that. And then, uh, like you said, you got, you know, we put you over there and definitely, um, I was, I had heat with the Deep South crowd at the time as well. So you really, you helped lift that heat off of me and put it on you at the time. <laughs> yeah, they fucking hated me. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they did. They, I mean, they wanted you dead. Like if that crowd could have got a hold of you, they would have murdered you. Like they just, they were done with you. Cross had his deathmatch debut under his belt, but that isn't the only thing Carnage Cup 9 became famous for. After the show, we, uh, Bill was trashed. I mean, like all the years before, is trashed. I get a call a couple days later. He said, hey man, he said, I found a pipe out in the... In the, in the parking lot, I found liquor bottles everywhere. I found a, a aluminum foil with some in it. And then, you know, just all these drugs and shit. And he said, you can't come back. Here, yet again, this is number nine, and uh, it's another building yet again, you know, we're banned from. We can't, can't fucking go back. What we forgot to mention about his Carnage Cup debut was that it was part of a tournament and he was to show up the next day for the next round. Cross would leave town without telling anyone that night, later claiming a family emergency. Between this and what had happened in his first match, he was on a road fast leading to a bad reputation. Um, and we get on the road and we get home a couple days fast, and then everybody starts, you know, why weren't you at day two, why weren't you at day two? And by that time, the story's already got out that I left because my grandpa was sick and that I just bitched out and all that because I didn't want to work Brian. And there was all that, but nobody really sat down and wanted to ask me, hey, what the fuck actually happened? This was the catalyst for what would become a consistent hatred from a particular man named Freak Show on the deathmatch scene. After nine, this is whenever the Facebook feuding between you and Show really escalated, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, it was right after nine. He, uh, he actually, you know, he, he shook my hand and everything at nine. I didn't figure he would after what had happened uh, at ACW and all that. So, you know, I knew he had, I knew he had the heat going. Um, so it made me feel better about that at nine when he shook my hand or whatever, but yeah, it definitely escalated after that because of, because of everything that was swirling around and the fact that I didn't show up, which yeah, I take responsibility for, for not showing up, but in my opinion, you know, I, I, had, I had a good reason. Yeah. I had a good reason uh, not to show up, but I just wish that somebody would have actually got my side on this whole thing it all swirled out of control and, and you know the heat just escalated and escalated 
Cross would break his leg by landing wrong during a battle royal and many believed they had seen the last of Christian Cross, but his most infamous night was still yet to come. As I'm going over, I spring up, my leg goes over my head and my whole body weight just lands on top of my leg and snaps it. Uh, my fibula, my tibia, and my femur. It, it snapped all that, but it broke my fibula, my tibia, the smallest bone, it shattered it, snapped my fibula in half, and, and it cracked my femur. So that's what happened with that one. It was a, it was a long road after that, but I... I made it eventually. Like I remember, you know, I remember getting uh, getting the word that you broke your leg or whatever, and I, you know, I remember messaging you about it, and you know, trying to encourage you to, you know, if you wanted to wrestle, just keep at it. You could come back, and you know, yeah, you did. You got that, and you know, eventually, obviously, it was a year or so. You got that book in at Carnage Cup 11, which is, you know, another infamous story with you. Christian Cross would attempt to redeem himself to the deathmatch audience by taking part in the deathmatch gauntlet of Carnage Cup 11. What was supposed to be a night of redemption quickly took a turn for the worse and became the most disastrous night of his entire run. Yeah. <laughs> so, walk me through, you know, the match that you had. It was the deathmatch gauntlet. Uh, your first match was actually with uh, Blaine Evans, correct? Yeah. And damn good match. So just walk me through the Blaine Evans match. Um, that ma that was honestly it was one of the stiffest matches I've had. Uh, but I came in, you know, I, I came in wanting to prove something. Uh, I had to. Even you told me before I went out there, like they fucking hate you out there, and you got to go out there and you got to show them something. So. That was my mindset the whole time. I was, you know, I was trying to make you proud and make myself proud, you know, because of my past with the old death match. Um, but I went out there and like we didn't call anything, <laughs> and then we called the finish, and that was it. We trusted each other. The whole thing. It was like I said, it was one of the stiffest matches I've had, and we took care of each other. Uh, first time I ever took tags in the head, so that was fun. Um, yeah, it was it was on one of my top favorite matches. That little thing I had with Blaine was I think it went about ten minutes, ten or twelve minutes. Yeah, I think y'all went longer. Yeah, y'all went longer because you, you after the Blaine, it was uh, Kilo, right? Yeah, yeah, it was Kilo. So walk walk me through the Kilo. Like walk walk me through your mindset at this point with Kilo. Okay, well the, this ties into the why I like now. Yeah. Uh, during the, the thing with Blaine, I took something, I don't know what it was, I, I took a kick, and I took a bump off of that kick, and when my hand went back, I, I don't know, I can't recall what was behind me, but I felt it, I felt it at first, but it wasn't horrible, so I didn't really think about it, and I put my hand up to kind of feel my head, so I was bleeding at, and there was blood coming out of it, it was bad, coming out of my finger, and I was like, what the fuck, so I was asking for tape. I was like, okay, I'll back tape it up, just keep going. What I've heard to do this, what I learned to do this, what I'm gonna do. And I didn't get any tape. <laughs> Nobody gave me any tape, so I'm like, well, fuck. So I kept working with it. And as I kept doing that, it just it got bigger. It got a little wider because it wasn't much at first. But every time I take a bump or pick something up, it would just cut it more. So I was like, well, fuck. I need some tape. Never got it. Huh. So I. Me and Blaine do our finish. I give him the attitude adjustment on the clusterfuck thing. I don't know what the fuck it was, but did that on him, Blaine. And finally, Brandon comes up, Brandon Morton, the ref, comes over with the tape and starts taking my hand. I'm like, well, thanks, motherfucker. It's about time. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it was, it was bad to me because I was, I was freaking out because I've never seen that much blood coming out of anywhere before on me. So I, I was freaking out and I was, you know, uh, so uh, Kilo gets in there and me and Kilo actually did talk about the match beforehand. So I, I felt, I felt safe for Kilo too. You know, he was like, we both have kids. If you feel like something's wrong, let me know and we'll go home. And we got in there and we started doing our stuff. He beat the fuck out of me. 
Like, I, I think I got a right to or something before. And, uh... With the match over, most would think that he was in the clear, but his issues with the deathmatch community were far from finished, and many in attendance were going to make sure he was aware of that. Cutting a match short the way that he did was looked down upon, and Cross was now being hunted down for answers. It's kind of a side freak show whenever you came up there, and I think um, the Blake security guard, he was walking with you. Like, did yeah, you... Uh... Yeah, when he picked me up, he was like, all right, I'm going to walk with you. I was like, okay, that's fine. Uh, he heard Freak Show's wife yelling to Freak Show to get me up the hill. And I, I don't know if you know what about me and Blake. We've been good friends for a while. Uh, and he was like, well, I'm not going to let that happen. I was like, it's fine, buddy. But he, he took me up there. He was beside me. That's why he did it, because he heard Freak Show's wife yelling, catch him at the hill, beat his ass, and shit like that. Uh, that's the whole reason Blake was beside me. I didn't ask him to or anything like that. I was perfectly fine to walk on my own. And he, he was just, he just happened to be there because I guess he didn't want anything to happen. But that's that's what happened with that. Trust me, Blake's taken care of me plenty of times. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good dude, Blake is. So now let's, uh, I, I did actually miss this. And I didn't even bring this up during the freak show part because I don't know if he was actually back there. When you were in the back getting uh, taped up, you had a visitor, right? I shot a couple of them. Yeah. Oh, okay, uh, t describe the backstage part, like, after that match. Well, I mean, pretty much, like, for the first five or ten minutes, like, because when I walked back, uh, I got to, I think it was your truck, and Spider was standing there, and I leaned against the truck for a second, and I just held my hand, and he was like, are you okay, did you have fun? And I was like, yeah. He's like, all right, good. And that was it. I was like, okay. Uh, so I asked him, I was like, do I need to glue this or just keep it taped? And that's where the whole super glue thing came from, by the way. Me begging for super glue? I just asked, I was like, Spider, do I need to tape this or do I need to glue it? You know, what do I need to do? And he was like, ah, you'll be all right. So I was like, okay. So I walk over to the little wooden chair everybody sits in, that was sitting in. And, uh, you know, they start taking the tape off 
and at this point, I'm just like, okay, well, that's kind of wide or whatever. So they start giving a little shit, putting the alcohol on it or whatever, and clean it up. And I go to stand up, and I turn around, and Freak Show's wife's behind me, and she's like cussing me out and shit. And she has like a, you know that bat that Freak Show carried to the ring? Yeah. She had that in her hand. And she's like, you make my husband look bad, you piece of fat shit. Fuck you, I'll fuck you up. And I just kind of looked at her and laughed. I was like, okay, whatever. And one of the uh, EMT ladies, I think it was the only lady EMT that was there, she was like, look, just drop it. She's like, no, I'm not going to fucking drop it, da, da, da. So I just walked off. I walked away. I'm like, okay, I'm not doing this. So I walked to my car. She walked away. That's fine. Uh, so I sit down. Sitting by the car, I'm just like, all right, I'm ready to go, which I couldn't because the person I rode with was still out there doing whatever. Um, well, I'm sitting there and I stand up. About, that's probably about 15 minutes later, and her and two other people start walking back over there, and she's doing the shit again or whatever. And this at this time, uh, my ex girlfriend's standing beside me, so you know she hears all of it and. She's saying the same shit that she was saying over on the other side by the chair. And I do the same thing. I just look at her and I laugh and I was like, okay, whatever. You know, I didn't say anything. I just, I was like, I'm not going to get into it with a woman. I'm not going to do it. There's no reason in sitting here and fucking having a verbal altercation with a female because she's mad at what just happened. That's fine. If Sho wants to talk to me about it afterwards, cool, whatever. But I'm not going to sit here and argue with her because she really has nothing to do with it. That's how, that's how I thought about it. Because in the end, it was between, just like now, it was between me and Freak Show. It, it had nothing to do with her. I understand she was mad, but there was no reason for her to be back there running her mouth and yelling at me the way she was just because she was upset, you know? So was that the, the, that was the last altercation that day? Yeah, that, that was it. And I just sit by the corner until... Uh, Oh, 11 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, cause that was an afternoon show, right? Yeah, it was like an eight-hour show. More than that, Jesus Christ, it was a long-ass show. It was hot. After his early exit from his second Carnage Cup, he was subject to new levels of disdain from the Deathmatch audience, a vocal member of which was a man known as Sam Squatch. Shit back. I haven't here recently, surprisingly. Hmm. 
Carnage Cup had only one big story coming out that year, and it was the Christian Cross incident. What he hoped to be his finest hour had become a complete debacle, and he had more enemies than ever in the deathmatch world. At the top of this list, you could find the one they called Freak Show. Over the years, Cross would try to get back into the good graces of the Carnage Cup Booker, but that seemed to be one more bridge that was destined to go up in flames. I want to go on to our next topic here. Their other person was none other than Christian Cross. Now, Cross has burnt you a few times. Uh, and here recently, it was again at, uh, what was that, uh, Lethal Leap Year? Yeah. So, yeah. What, what's your thoughts on uh, Christian Cross now? I hope he dies a slow death. That face shit, I wouldn't piss in his mouth. He's on fire on the side of the damn highway. Now, did you did you ever get a like what happened or anything, or did he just purely not show? Didn't show. He wanted his uh, cause you know he lives in Arkansas now, so he wanted uh, he wanted his trans up front, which I was fine with that. That's what ended up happening, man. I ended up playing around his damn part of his train or it what I was sending him and the motherfucker didn't show up, you know. And I tried to message him after the day after the show and never would respond. I had other guys message him and they would they didn't get a response. Yeah, let's talk about uh shoot style baby tournament and lethal leap year. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think when I got booked for that. It wasn't long before it happened, actually. I think it was like three weeks, two weeks before. It might have been longer than that. I don't really know. Um, cause I, was, I forgot. I don't know when I was booked for it, but I was booked for it for a little while. Um, and I was super excited about it, and then some shit happened, which we can get into. You need me to? You want me to? No, go for it. Alright, so at the time, you know, me and, me and Kevin were talking back and forth, uh, which was fine. I mean, I was cool with Kevin again, and I'm, I'm glad he, he booked me on that. Uh, I met, okay, we'll get to that day. <laughs> we'll get to that day. Um, let me see. When, when was it again? It was probably, what, like a month ago? Two months ago? Yeah, it's been about two months now. Alright, so, uh, he sent me my money, I'm, you know, he sent me my money for it, uh, which I'll admit to that or whatever, and uh, I messaged him the day before, I told him, I was like, look man, I don't know if that's going to be quite enough to get there and back, because that's what I needed, because, I mean, if he's going to, if you're going to book somebody, you know, make sure that it's enough to get back and forth, which I told him the first amount was, and he sent it, and I started really, you know, thinking about it. And we drive a big ass, it's a 2000, I think it was a 2013 Durango. So it's a, it's a big truck. It takes gas. And I messaged him and I was like, hey man, look, you know, I might need, you know, $50 more. I never got anything back. Never got, never got a message back. And I still got the messages in my, on my Facebook, you know. And I was like, all right, I just need this and I can get there and back. That's fine. Nothing. He never even opened them. I never opened the messages. And I waited and waited, and I was like, okay, if I don't have enough to get there and back, I don't have any money in my pocket right now. What am I supposed to do? Because I deactivated my Facebook right afterwards. So I was like, fuck it, I know exactly what's going to happen. But, yeah, I never got a message from him at all. All I got was him blocking me afterwards. So I had all of the messages I sent to him, like, hey, man, I need this, and this is what I need, or I can't... I can't physically make it down there and make it back. Well, what is your thoughts on Kevin Brandon on now on this day? Oh, fuck that motherfucker. Listen, he, by the way, he, 
he's gonna say he wishes I died. So that really fucking pissed me off. I was like, I right, fuck that motherfucker then. Because, I mean, I... Honestly, uh, if he would have just read the fucking messages or opened on one of the two, he would have known how the fuck I didn't make it. So he didn't have to fucking get on there and trash me like that, which I understand if I wouldn't have said shit. I just no show. No showing after already being paid, Cross was all but written off with the deathmatch world. The story would likely end there, if not for Cross challenging his old nemesis freak show in Facebook groups he thought couldn't be seen by his rival. This was unfortunately not the case, and he was given the wish he thought couldn't be seen. He was booked to face freak show one on one. The whole Venom Championship Wrestling Tennessee show, Christian Cross versus Freak Show, that you wasn't contacted about, correct? Yeah, not at all. <laughs> like, I heard they were, show was talking about it, and Randy was commenting on posts, and like, yeah, I'm gonna book this. I'm like, uh, you need to fucking get a hold of me first. I mean, what the fuck? And I never got a message, and then I saw that he posted the match, and I was like, well, it'd be nice to know that I was fucking booked for it. I mean, I knew it might have I was going to get booked, but I figured he would have the decency to let me know and not just throw it on me like that. So has, has, has he called you or anything yet to book you? I mean, he messaged me the other day, and he was like, look, this is what I'm going to give you to come down here, nothing more. And I was like, so you're telling me what I'm going to do. <laughs> and honestly, I'll be honest with you, he told me not to talk bad about him on here, but, you know, fuck him. I mean, he's... he's like I said, he's done this shit a million fucking times and he's going to book me without me knowing. You know, what the fuck is that? Now, I I predicted a 1% chance that the match is going to happen. As, is my percentage pretty much right? No, I mean, if, if it's booked, I'll be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't... I'm not going to not be there because everybody already thinks I was scared of him, so I'm not going to give him another reason. He would not be at the event, and people continued saying he was afraid of Freak Show. This would culminate in a live stream where Cross was interviewed with Freak Show in the chat. Aaron Bond says bullshit, he can't work. I guess he's talking about you. Yeah, it's just Freak Show. And then uh, that Bond dude saying that, uh, called, I think he called you a green bean. That's just freak show, man. I, it's whatever. Like I said earlier, I don't have. There's like nothing else I can say. That is freak show. Yeah, like he. Well, let's get let's get him on here. Let freak show get 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 on here. We're gonna try to get freak show on here. Don't get nervous. <laughs> we we're gonna try. No, I'm good. You I mean, got nervous. No, I feel like you got a little nervous. <laughs> no, no. He, we fucking, we sent uh, voice fucking clips back and forth on Facebook for like three hours, and then his wife did too. So I've had plenty of conversation. Appreciate sure this called you a goof. That's so fine. We'll find out. We'll totally find out on the third of July. I mean, his phone is blowing up with everybody hitting me up about this goof. He's referring to you. I mean, July 3rd, bro. Like, I, there's nothing else I can fucking say about it. We'll just find out about all this July 3rd. I really do think you got scared. You got a little nervous. I promise I didn't. <laughs> Man, Preacher would scare the shit out of me. I mean, he's, he's, he can be an intimidating guy, yeah, but, I mean, you can't just be scared of everybody, man. <laughs> like... There's no reason to be either you're going to get your ass whooped or they're going to get their ass whooped. It, it goes one of those two ways. It's just, it's just, it's so like black or white with you. It's just, there's no gray area, is there? Do what? It's just, it's just like, like, like black or white. There's, there's no gray area in between. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know what else to say about it, you know, because we've we've talked a lot like we had there was like seven hours of conversation throughout the day that we had about 
fucking meeting up and fighting. Then this whole fucking match got set up, so. I hope it goes down. I would like to see that. Preacher says, let me ask Paul if he knows your dad. Your dad. Your dad. I don't think he knows my dad, if that's what you're trying to say, but uh, whatever. No. All he put it was DA. DA. I do not uh, know. I have no idea. Ooh. Spider Boudreaux is watching, or was watching. I don't know if he's still in there. What do you think about him? He doesn't like me either. <laughs> like Just like a lot of other people. I don't have any problems with him either. Um, wait, wait, do a lot of people not like you? Oh, there, yeah. Most of the people in here right now probably don't like me. <laughs> so, so yeah. Are you a dick or something? Like, like are you a dick to him? What, what no, the no, it's just, it's How just. How do you get that many people not to like? It's How? the whole Carnage Cup situation. It's, it's oh. something happening in Carnage Cup. That's all it is. Let's see. Okay. Free Show said that you disrespected Deathmatch Wrestling and you're not going to get away with it. I admitted that. I, I did. I mean, I don't know what yeah. else he, he he wants me to he wants me to say because I've admitted that that I dis I did disrespect everybody by the way that I that I went about things and he has his chance to to you know show me how he feels when we have this when we have this thing that we're doing on the third. So, uh, I mean, he, this is what he does. He, he keeps talking and keeps talking, and I don't have anything else to say about it. Look, 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 look at me. Hey, yo, brother. There's a freak show yeah, here. I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> What's up, brother? I'm sorry. That's not a very good impression of him, but whenever he comments, like, I'm going to say it for him. That way, um, I'm sorry. I don't know. Uh, your name, Mr. Host. Oh, Donnie. Oh, okay, you're the Donnie. Okay, hello, Donnie. Nice to meet you. Uh, nice from Freak you. Show. He ran. I didn't run. <laughs> you ran. I ran. I walked right past him. I was <laughs> what the fuck? Neil, are you are you are you um, filling in for for Freak Show right now? Yeah, when he types going? things, like, I'm gonna say it for him. He pulls okay, right so, in front of yards. So, free to say anything that you want right now, anything, <laughs> and Neil is going to interpret it for us. Now, I'm just a middleman. I do not believe the same things he does. So, just so you understand, I'm just translating. I got you, bro. So he says uh, he pulls rings and wrestles in the in the yard. Not a backyard, a front yard. <laughs> that makes no fucking sense. Okay, here's where that came from. We have a ring over here on a trailer. We put it in the front yard, and we were fixing the wood on it. And I took pictures and posted them that we were fixing the fucking wood on it. And he got from that that we wrestle in the front yard and pull this ring for other people. That didn't happen. So, I mean, that's fine if he thinks that, but that's not, that's not it. That's not what happened. And he didn't say shit. I love that place. Like anytime he posts something, I'm just gonna say what he says. <laughs> I didn't so say shit about what because I'm saying shit right now. Uh I'm gonna do it in what it probably actually sounds like. No other workers on the show that you pulled the ring and told me. No other workers on the show that you pulled the ring to tell that told me. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So it just hit me. It just hit me. You, 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 cross. You wanted to end the like, like y'all, y'all decided to end the match early. Because you had a cut. Because how bad was that cut? Like, like after at it was the all time, done, like did you have to go? At the time, I thought I was fucking dying. But now that I look back on it, it wasn't that bad, man. Like I still got the scar from it and shit, but it wasn't. It wasn't horrible. 
Oh, here we go. Hold on. Pause. Freak Show just wrote a paragraph, so give me a second to get into character. This guy invited me into a group chat talking shit. So, about the ninth time I came in and fired back, he started crying and didn't like it. I haven't fucked with him in two years. So, of be so enough of being disrespected, dick. I'm sure it sounds way meaner coming from him, but I don't know what the ninth is. Oh, the ninth time. Okay. Yeah, uh, he came, came in and fired back. Fired back. Yeah. Well, no, I didn't start crying. I just I fired back myself, and we started arguing back and forth. Uh, and it's been less than two years because every time I look at something, somebody posts about Carnage Cup or or anything like that, he's the one that brings my name into it. It could be something like I have nothing to do with. It's like oh, you know, Christian Cross will bitch out of that. Da da da. So I mean, yeah, I'm gonna say something if somebody's bringing my name up. The way that I look at it, either, like I'm, I'm either gonna get my ass whooped or it's gonna be vice versa. And I said that too. I made him popular. That's the only reason he's on here now. I think the reason I'm on here now is because I picked my phone up and joined the fucking chat. He won't show <laughs> up. <laughs> I don't know. I'll show up. I'll show up. <laughs> you're not going to get in the Uber car if he orders it because you're going to sit home and eat all the cookies. Yet again, I don't get the cookie reference, but more power to you if you love your cookies, bro. Murder Death Kill Club says, will we ever go back to Deep South? Or will you ever go back to Deep South? If I'm asked. I mean, I doubt it because uh, I, I doubt Kevin's ever going to book me again. But if I was asked, yeah, I'd go back. I gotcha. He, he, he thinks Kevin don't like it. Oh, I know Uh-oh. Kevin doesn't like me. He wants me. To, I told you, man, he wants me to fucking die. He admitted that. Come on, man, rip into him, bro. Come on, work it. Come on, man. Come on, tell him you're going to fucking rip off his dick and shove it in his butt. Do something, man. Fuck. Yeah, cross like unload on him, bro. All right, I don't know what to do. Man, like, fuck. <laughs> you, you gonna waterboard him? Where is the promo now, dipshit? I, I'm, 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 come on, man, cross, dude. Do you ever get angry? <laughs> Not often, but I mean, sometimes. Not a lot. <laughs> fuck. Okay, let me ask it this way. Is that angry? Do what? You broke Did your gimmick get angry? Yeah. Let me get angry! Get in character. Fuck! Hold up. Like, I can be a goofball the whole time because that's my gimmick, but come on, man. Get mad. Let that that, uh, southern man anger come out. Aww. Oh, Left. Really? Cross would once again exit early and Christian Cross versus Freak Show would never happen. It is likely you have never heard of Christian Cross or will ever hear of him again, but to a select few, he is as known as the biggest names in all of wrestling, but for the opposite reasons. Between screwing promoters not properly training before beginning his career and changing match finishes mid-match, it was safe to say things were never really going to go any differently. Many would say his treatment was unfair and had he been trained to begin with, none of this would have ever happened. Unfortunately, we will never know if that is the case. However, it should be stated, he did provide a perfect cautionary tale for young guys who want to take shortcuts to being a wrestler.